Hello, welcome to a demo on the Nexus Dashboard Fabric Controller Layer 4 to Layer 7 Service Insertion and Redirection. This is Karishma Gupta, Technical Marketing Engineer, Cisco. NDFC provides the ability to insert a Layer 4 to Layer 7 service device in a data center fabric and enable selective redirection of traffic to these service devices. We can add a service node, create route peering between these service nodes and a service leaf switch and selectively redirect traffic to these service nodes. These are the three different steps and we'll be covering all these steps in detail. The very first step is to create a service node for which we must either create an external fabric or select an existing external fabric and make the service node part of this fabric during the node creation. We must specify the node name, type, and the form factor. The service node is attached to either a leaf, border leaf, border spine, or a border super spine. And hence, we must specify the interfaces on both the service node as well as the device, which is a leaf device, for example. NDFC would manage the switches and the associated interfaces of these attached switches to the service node. Ensure that these interfaces are in trunk mode and do not belong to any interface group before configuring these uh, service nodes. The next step is to create a route peering. Route peering creates a service network. NDFC supports both static as well as dynamic route peering options. After we specify the service network and select the peering policy for the tenant or VRF, NDFC will create a service network automatically. And this service network can be seen under the LAN fabric section and we can browse to the network section to see this network that is automatically created. The very third step is to create a service policy. When we create a service policy between the created networks, the source and destination can either be a subnet, an individual IP address, or the networks that are already present. For intra-tenant firewall, we support one arm and two arm load balancer and the layer 4 to layer 7 service in NDFC would be using PBR for the service insertion. Inter-tenant firewall does not need a service policy. We only need to create a service node and route peering and that is what we're going to look at in this demo. So we browse under the services section of our LAN right here, we're able to see all these steps Let's look at the sample setup. This involves creating the service node, creating the route peering and service policy for our intra-tenant firewall use case. So this is exactly what we discussed and can be seen in the sample setup. So let's get started. Let's browse to the service node and let's go ahead and add a service node. It needs a name, it needs the node type, which can be a firewall, a load balancer or a VNF. Thereafter, we select a form factor. We support both physical and virtual. We will then make this service node part of an external fabric, define the node interface that is attached to the service node, and we'll specify which fabric the service node must be attached to. We're going to use the Omaha fabric and the leaf switch in the Omaha fabric. We'll also specify the attached switch interface, which is eat one slash 10. This is going to be a trunk interface. So we select that as a link template and it would pop up all the options, which is all out of box. We will specify the allowed VLANs to be VLAN 10 and 20. Now we're going to create a route peering, which is the second step. We are going to select static peering in this example, but we very much support dynamic peering as well. In this example, what we want is any traffic from the inside network, which belongs to our VRF Corp, which already exists to the outside network, to the VRF Eng again, which already exists, must be sent to the firewall. So back and forth traffic redirection to the firewall, it's intertenant. So from Corp VRF to Eng VRF. And as part of this step, we are going to create two networks, which are our in network, and the out network belonging to VLAN 10 and 20 respectively. So here we're going to use the existing templates for the network. We're going to specify the gateway for the network for both the sides. So here we specify 10, 10, 10, 1, 20, 20, 21. Now the important step here is the static route. So let's go over this. 
what this means is that for any traffic going from our corp vrf to 10 200 10.0 subnet which belongs to the outside network must traverse to 10 10 10 10 which is the associated interface of the least device likewise any traffic going to the inside network belonging to subnet 10 100 10.0 this time must again go to the 20 20 20 20 ip as the next hop which again belongs to the leaf device so any of this traffic going from eng to corp corp to eng on these subnets must be redirected to the firewall that's what this particular step is talking about once we define that, we can attach the network, both the inside and outside network using the static peering option. And we are able to preview everything we did in this particular table. Once we preview the configurations, we're able to see what VRF configuration will be pushed to our LIFO Maha for the VRF Corp. So we're able to look at the exact configuration. Likewise for the network, this is the in network that will be created we see an SVI with VLAN 10, the IP address, and this network is part of the VRF Corp. Likewise, we can also select the out network to preview the configuration. So this is basically now ready to be deployed. Once the configurations are previewed and it looks okay, we can deploy the config. Once everything is deployed, we can go into the topology view to view how our firewall is attached to our Omaha fabric. Double clicking on the Omaha fabric, we're able to see exactly what leaf it is associated with. So that is under the operation tab. We're also able to see the flows that will be redirected using the service insertion. That was it for the demo. Thank you so much for watching.